All right, so I want to do a quick video on how to adjust your cut mute to be in tune. It's very necessary in order to get the right intonation and right sound. If you put this in without adjusting, you're going to find it sits so far out from the end of the bell. Notice it's up really close. This is one of the Ray Robinsons. It also has a label on it that says file corks if necessary. And there's little tabs on this one. And that actually relates to the stone line one I'll show you in a second. But when you adjust them, they play in tune without having to move the tune of the slide. The reason I mention the tabs is that's supposed to help with your spacing from the end of your bell to the edge of your cup. And so those are supposed to about touch when you put it in, give you the right spacing. You'll notice that there are scallops, little points on the stone line mutes that are all around the cup. And the idea with those is that those are also supposed to partially basically touch the bell to help you with your spacing on how far apart it should be. And you'll see that this one's got quite a bit of space on there. So what you need to do is you need to sand the corks down or file the corks down. And I take a flat file like this. It's got four different sides to it. One has got a kind of a rounded edge to it. And the other side is flat and there are different textures all the way around it. I will take the flat, smoother texture, the one that doesn't have quite so many points on it. And I will gradually go around. You want to use one that's at least a half to three quarters thick. Uh, so that way you get a nice feel across it. I've used these small uh, hobby ones before and they'll get you through in a pinch but these are the best way to do it plus it gets you working a little bit quicker into this. You'll notice that it starts sanding and coming off pretty quickly and it does make kind of a mess. You'll notice I'm wearing an apron so do this somewhere where you can easily clean up. Don't do a whole lot at a time. I usually count how many strokes go on to the next one and I'll do a little bit then make sure you blow it off before you put it back in the horn so you don't fill the horn with pieces of cork. That registers about 15 cents flat still. So we need to uh, sand it a little bit more. And the idea is to not only get it in tune, but once you get it to that point, you can adjust a little bit more just for the sound. You can go farther in than the point when it's in tune and it'll be just fine. At that point, you're just uh, adjusting how open or closed the mute sounds. And you can kind of see already, this is the front of me, which is why I wear the apron. Okay, put that in. It's already much closer. The other way you can adjust these as you're playing is to check and see if the low F sharp below the staff, the one, two, and three F sharp. And that will tell you if the mute's responding the way it should be. You need to do the same thing on straight mutes. It's not just for cut mutes. When you sand these, I'm sanding this to the particular trumpet, and the flare on my C trumpet might not be the same as the flare on my B flat, or if you have multiple B flats, you might need to look at getting different sets of mutes for each instrument so that they're fit and tuned correctly. So that's starting to speak a little bit better, a little bit better in tune. Notice how much closer those points are, but it still needs to go more in order to be in tune. The closer we get to being where we want to be, the smaller amounts of change we want to make because you can always take more off but you can't put it back on well I guess you can but then you have to start over with new corks you can go to your music store and get new corks or I will go to the auto parts store and buy the feel pro uh, rolls of gasket and these are a rubber cork composite Pre
pretty close. I'm gonna live a little dangerously and file it just a little bit more. Again, really keep an eye. You'll notice I'll tilt this sometimes. As much as you try, sometimes you might get an angle from one side to the other uh, on it, and it's best to try to keep them as flat as possible when you're sanding, both top to bottom and from side to side. Better, still just a hair out of tune. And I still have some more po uh, space before those points reach the bell. You notice that's definitely much thinner than a new piece of cork, which I don't, ah, here we go. Kind of the idea, you can see it's almost half. You can see this one's got slight taper to the top of it. Again, that's one of the things to be careful about, but if you keep an eye on it and watch it before it gets too far, you can usually fix it. And if it's a little off, it's okay. So long as it still fits in the horn. Now you have an in-tune cut mute that you can use, and you don't have to adjust the tuning slide when you do it.